Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to thank the Foreign Secretary for advanced sight of his statement. This is indeed a matter of profound concern and gravity for us all. The tragic and senseless attack in the Golan Heights over the weekend must be met with full, unequivocal condemnation. Children and young people innocently playing football with bright futures and the rich tapestry of life ahead of them had their lives cruelly snatched away. My thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of the whole House, will be with their parents, siblings, friends and all those affected by this monstrous act. Madam Deputy Speaker, the risk of further escalation across the blue line is real and the Government is right to take it seriously. We do not want to see a widening of this painful conflict and the opening of a new front would be in nobody's interest. If we are to avoid it, all involved need to show restraint. We should be crystal clear that includes Hezbollah. Let nobody forget this is a prescribed terrorist organisation which has no regard for human life, human dignity or human rights, and nobody should be in any doubt about Hezbollah's intention towards the world's only Jewish state. And Hezbollah supports Hamas, another prescribed terrorist organisation, which has also inflicted appalling suffering with the worst atrocity committed against Jewish people since the Holocaust and the Second World War. Hezbollah must cease its attacks right now. That message must be aimed at Tehran too. The government must use the communication channels that we have with Iran to be extremely firm with the regime. Iran must use its influence to rein in its proxies and stop destabilising the Middle East. But beyond stern words, we must use all the tools at our disposal to disrupt malign behaviour by Iran and its proxies like Hezbollah, including tough sanctions to crack down on finance sources and flows of weapons. Sanctions must also demonstrate that terror group leaders cannot escape the consequences of their action. The government must also rally the international community to collectively reaffirm its commitment to implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701, because that is critical for a long-term peace. If I may, I'd like to press the Foreign Secretary on three specific points. First, what steps is he taking to amplify the advice that he has already and rightly given so clearly that British nationals in Lebanon should leave now? What is he doing in country to get the message across and make information on how to leave quickly and easily accessible? What steps is he taking to look after the interests of the Foreign Office and other dependents in Lebanon? Secondly, does he have an estimate of how many Brits are actually in Lebanon? And thirdly, what discussions has he had with key partners in the region who, like us, wish to see a destabilising escalation averted? Madam Deputy Speaker, I would like to conclude by making a broader point. We are clearly at a critical point in this conflict. We could see Hamas accept the deal on the table, which would see a pause in the fighting, a return of the hostages, a flood of aid, and the space created to bring about the conditions for a sustainable peace. Or we could see the suffering in Gaza grind on and a dangerous escalation along the Blue Line. This is the time to be putting maximum pressure on Hamas, as we have been discussing today, and on Hezbollah. It is also the time to remain in close dialogue with Israel and maintain our position as a trusted partner, because that is critical, whether for getting more aid into Gaza or for urging restraint by Israel. The Foreign Secretary will have heard concerns in recent days about what many of us perceive as a shift in the government's approach to our close ally Israel, including in relation to the International Criminal Court. The Foreign Secretary gave me an answer on that point in, earlier, in, uh, in oral questions uh, earlier today. We should make clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, that while recognition of Palestine is important and does not need to be at the end of the process, it equally cannot be at the start of the process where it could be seen as a reward for violence and for terror. I do hope that going forward the Government will not only continue to work to avoid an escalation along the Blue Line, but also maintain this close relationship with Israel. 
The trust and friendship that exists between the UK and Israel matters because it allows us candidly to discuss all aspects of the current conflict with Israeli counterparts at the very highest levels, in addition to using our influence as a member of the United Nations Security Council. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Foreign Secretary. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm grateful to the right honourable gentleman for the tone and the cross-party nature in which he made his remarks. Um, he knows better than many in this House how serious it is dealing with any crisis that might escalate um, uh, uh, at this time. He's absolutely right to draw the relationship between Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, with Iran. Um, of course, we keep our sanctioned regime uh, under review, but he's right to press the case about the axis, and he's absolutely right that, of course, we keep all channels open, those that we have, with Iran. Um, he'll be pleased to know that I spoke to Prime Minister Mizrani. We talked about the blue line. He will recall that I was in Lebanon um, a few months before the election was called, and I indicated um, in oral questions earlier. It is my hope to get to the region once more, um, uh, taking all advice that he would expect me um, to take. I want to reassure him that it has been important, of course, to communicate our advice to leave Lebanon, and if you are in the UK um, at this time, not to travel to Lebanon and to convey that advice across all channels. Uh, and that is taking place, it's been taking place since last night, and it will be taking place over the coming days to communicate that very loudly in country as well. He will also note that we have begun the registration scheme that allows UK nationals to register their presence in Lebanon so that we know uh, where they are, Madam Deputy Speaker. Of course, we keep the safety of our consular staff uh, in close uh, and a close review, uh, particularly with the dangers that exist with missiles being fired in this way um, on both sides. Our estimation is that about 16,000 uh, UK nationals are in the region, but of course asking people to register does enable us to know uh, who is there, and of course we urge people to leave on the many flights that are available currently, commercial flights from Lebanon, to leave and make their way to Europe and back home. And of course, we are working with our international partners. He will note that the US, Germany and Canada all um, upping their travel advice along the lines that we first began yesterday. <laughs> 